Hello everybody and welcome to my psychic comic review. Before I get started with today's comic, I just wanted to let you guys know that a while back Marvel had a promotion where they released all of their number one comics for free. I believe it was supposed to be for like 48 hours or something. Well, they kind of failed at it. Servers crashed. No one, I guess, was prepared for the volume of people that would try to download, me included. I, I tried to download stuff for like 16 hours and it wouldn't download. I got I got no comics at all. Like, and it wouldn't, it wasn't just the number ones. It wouldn't download anything. So they kind of failed. It, it's really surprising. Like, why would people not want to download these comics? Like, obviously you guys should have fixed that. But anyway, whenever they like failed, they sent out a thing where you could sign up for updates on when those comics would be available. So I just got an email a couple days ago from Comixology, which is the site that you signed up at, and they let me know that for all of the people that signed up starting on April 11th, which is tomorrow, they will be sending out emails to the people that signed up. And once you get your email, you go, there. They, I'm guessing they give you like a link, you go to the link, you put in like your username and your password and then you have 48 hours to claim as many of those 700 number one comics as you want. They're free, they're free of charge. After the 48 hours or if you didn't sign up you can still get those comics but you have to purchase them and I believe they start at $1.99 and they go up to like $3 or $4.99. So even if you're not going to read them it would still be, if you have like the storage it would be awesome to download all 700 of those if you could because if you think about it, if they're selling them for at least $1.99, you're getting at least like $1,400 in comics for free. Which actually it's more because some of them will be 3 and I think $4.99. So it's a really good deal. I don't think, I mean, I don't think that it's something that you can like sell. So don't, don't do it to make money because that's, that's horrible. But it is something that you could do just, you know, if, if you don't like Spider-Man but your best friend does, then oh well look, you can buy, you know, The Avenging Spider-Man number one and he can read it and you can just have it. For whatever reason. Maybe later on you'll just be bored and read something that you didn't think that you'd want and it turned out to be really cool. So if anybody signed up for that, um, check your email. Not everybody's going to get their email on the 11th. They're going to do like so many at a time. So if you don't get an email on the 11th, don't freak out. That's just when it starts. And then once you get your email, like I said, you have 48 hours. So good news on that front. They kind of made it right and that makes me happy. Although I um, just randomly, they gave me like 20 of the number ones. I don't know. I didn't download them, but they're in my um, list on my comic thing. So I have some of the number ones, but I don't know if they did it for everybody or if I'm just weird and they liked me. I don't know. So that's all I have to say about that. Okay, today's comic review that I'm doing is the Snapshot comic. It is by Andy Diggle and Jock. Um, it came out in February of 2013, so it's fairly new. It's a four-part series. Um, this is part one that I'm going to be doing the review of today. It came out in February, and then the second one came out in March. Um, the third one came out in April, and then there'll be one that comes out in May, and it'll be the final one. So, a little bit of background on the authors. Um, Andy Diggle has worked on things such as, um, he worked on Swamp Thing 1 through 6, which came out in 2004. Um, he also worked on Batman Confidential, and he also worked on The Green Arrow Year One. And they've speculated. I haven't watched the Arrow show that's on CW now. Like I haven't watched that, um, but I guess there's a there's a character in it named Annie Diggle, and because he worked on Green Arrow Year Year One, they're debating that maybe he was named after that character. But I'm not really I'm not really sure about that. Um, Jock does more than just comics. Um, they've worked on movies such as Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises. They've also worked on Shaun of the Dead, which I love that movie, so that made me happy. Um, they've also worked on The Game of Thrones, which is hugely popular. I haven't watched it yet because I want to read the books that it comes from. It's kind of like how I haven't really watched a lot of The Walking Dead yet because I want to do the comic series, which I'm through a fairly good amount. I think I have enough to watch season one, but I just haven't. I've watched like three episodes, so... I'm working on it. Um, comics that they've done, um, Wolverine Max, they also worked on the Green Arrow Year One, which is kind of how they met. They have a good chemistry, and I think in the future they do plan on doing more projects together. Um, he's also worked on um, Dark X-Men, which I've heard is really good. I haven't read it yet, but it is on my list of things to read. And then he also worked on Tron. So that's some things that Jock's done. Okay, so the premise of Snapshot, um, it takes place in San Francisco. 
It is about a kid that works at a comic book store, and he, I don't know, just a regular guy, you know, works at a comic book store. He doesn't have super, this is not like a superhero comic at all. It's purely non-superhero. Like, no one has superpowers, none of that. So if you're only into like superheroes, this is not your comic. But if you're into just like regular stories, this is, this is a good series to have. So he doesn't have a car actually in one of the later comics you learn he he doesn't even know how to drive so he rides his bike to the comic book store he's working his boss is out of town so he's kind of in charge um he has a best friend who hangs out with him um he while riding to work one day he finds a phone in the park um it's like a big fancy phone maybe like an iphone or something like that and so he picks it up he's just like oh okay whatever phone so he keeps it he takes his comic book store him and his friend are messing around with it looking at comics and messing around and they do what, you know, the majority of people would do. They look through the phone, they look at the phone numbers, they look at other stuff. Eventually he ends up looking at the pictures and the pictures have pictures of a dead body. A guy who's been shot in the head, he's missing a pinky, there's blood everywhere, it's horrible. So he gets freaked out. So the phone rings. So. I wouldn't have answered this call because I don't like to answer people that I don't know, especially if it's on a phone that I don't know, but whatever. He answers the phone. It's the police. They want the phone because they're investigating the homicide. Whatever. So people come, but it's not the police. It's an impersonator. Eventually he runs away because they're trying to shoot him. Like He goes to the real police with the phone saying, you know, what the heck, like... People are following me. I don't know what's on this phone. I just found it. Like, I, I have nothing to do with this. Whatever. Police look at it. They're trying to figure it out. Well, then in walks the guy who's been shot in the head on the picture, on the phone. He's alive. He's still missing a pinky, but he's alive. There's no wound in his head. He's walking and talking. There's no one else with him, so he's clearly doing it under his own power. He's just like, hey, yo, this is my phone, so I'm gonna take it back and everything's gonna be good. So he takes the phone. And poor comic book store guy, he's still being chased. Even though, you know, you think, okay, that's that's it. Like, you find a random phone, you, you give it back to the owner. Like, even if something bad was on that phone, if you have nothing to do with it, you think, you think it would be over. But no, it, it's not over. They're still following him. They go back to the comic book store to wait for him. He doesn't come. His friend, who, I'm glad I don't. I probably do have friends like this, but in my mind I don't. His friend's like... Let's go to this guy's house and see why he had that picture on his phone. So they go to the guy's house. And the guy is legitimately dead this time. Not a fun time. And of course the guy that shot the, the legitimately dead dude is there this time. And he's not happy. It kind of it kind of just ends there. Like he he's shot the guy who was dead on the phone the first time. The guy's legitimately dead now. Um he also shoots the guy's best friend, who, it was his idea to go, so I guess that's moral of the story. If you want to go to some random person's house, don't do that because you're gonna get shot in the head. Whatever. Um, and then it just kind of ends, like, the guy's begging not, he's like, I don't know anything, like, I have nothing to do with this, there's no reason for you to kill me, and he's like, you're right. And it just kind of ends there. But it doesn't, I mean, it, it continues in the second one, and it, it makes more sense. But... I don't know. It, it doesn't seem as interesting in the very first issue. Like, when I was done with that, I was like, I have no idea what they're going to do with this. It's kind of strange. But I do I do really like it. As a series as a whole, if you just read the first one, don't. Like, you have to read all of them. And I have all three of them now. Well, three of the four, because that's all there is right now. Um, another thing that I like about this comic, sometimes later on it, it does kind of become a pain. It's all black and white. I don't know. Like, there's no color. Or anything which is good but I do like color sometimes because like it helps distinguish people like okay the main character he has long hair and he could potentially maybe look like a girl sometimes like an Asian girl or something so Later on, whenever there are actual female characters, it does get kind of hard to decipher the two because it is black and white. They both have the same hairstyle-ish 
and I mean the clothes don't have color or patterns or anything so sometimes it, it is a little hard to decipher like characters um, like example this guy is like a station uh, just a random customer but I kind of think that he looks like the guy's friend who is up here they kind of look the same to me only one has glasses and they're not the same person so I don't know if if Jock just didn't couldn't think of like specific features to give people that day or if he just wanted to draw the same person or if he was just I don't know he had a deadline and so he just kind of made the same person and just added glasses I'm not really sure they might not look the same to you but they do to me a little bit like I mean I can tell the difference but and that one guy isn't even a main character I'm not even sure why he's there he just kind of pops in asks a question and leaves he has nothing as unless he comes back in the fourth one he has nothing to do with the story so overall I really enjoy snapshot I would recommend it to others but it's not like an absolute must like if you don't read it I don't think that your life will suffer but I still suggest that you read it if you have nothing else to read in your life so that's my comic review for today. I will do um, snapshot number two, which is right here. It does have a little bit piece of red on it, but that's it. That's the only piece of color that it has on it. So I would recommend that. I will do a review on it soon um, for you guys. And that's all I have for today. So enjoy your day. If you guys get an email tomorrow from Comixology, take advantage of your free comics up to a fourteen hundred or more than a fourteen hundred dollar value. So we can't we can't beat that. So. Get your free comics, read Snapshot, that's all I can say. So have a fantastic day, you guys.